What's up, y'all? Good morning. <sighs> I'm up and I was going to do a what's up all this weekend and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to talk about and then it was like, oh, because I don't want to talk about what's, what's up. <laughs> you know, because it's so much easier to have <sighs> retroactive reflection than it is to be in real time struggle. Um, but I know that I'm not alone and so it feels important to talk through it and talk to it and talk about it um, and see, just get it out. So this is me just getting it out and hopefully it's helpful for your journeys too. So, um, and I don't even really know what I'm going to say, so but y'all know that's how I do. <sighs> so I really kind of had a whole breakdown the other night and yesterday morning, and I realized, I was like, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, and I am in like very activated in my old stories um, and today I can see my old stories for what they are right I recognize them and oh that's such a benefit it is such a benefit to like it's such a benefit to be able to see it and be like oh I know you I know who you are I know what you are I understand how you operate. Um, I, um, so as you all know, I'm back in the States and what you may not know is that I'm back in the States come totally on a faith walk, totally here because my ancestors told me that I needed to come back to the United States. And it felt scary. It, but what's interesting is it felt scary, but there was this entire story. Not, there was a whole thing I believed I was walking into that I don't know if I'm not. Let me be clear. It's, it's just not moving the way I thought it was going to move. And so when I got multiple signs, multiple signs, multiple signs, multiple directions, very clear instruction from my ancestors to, to leave news, to leave a really safe country with no COVID and come back to an incredibly unsafe country with massive amounts of COVID. Um, I believed that I was coming back to I was coming back. I was going to a particular place. There was already a house for me. I understood it. And so, you know, it's easy to walk into a faith that you have. It's easy to walk into a future you already know. It is difficult to walk into a future that is unknown. And I was walking into a future that I already knew because I told myself I already knew it. And I told myself that it was going to go this particular way. And for me, one of the things that I do to navigate anxiety is I want to know the future. <laughs> I mean, and don't we all? And there's a way in which some of us, there are different ways we do that. Some of us want to know the future by never changing the present or the past so that the future looks exactly the same. So that it feels predictable. So that life feels predictable. For others of us, like me, we change all the time and we're always changing the future, but we're always guessing and always trying to glean and make meaning of what's getting ready to happen next. Um, so that although we can change, we, there's still some sense of knowing or certainty in where we're going. Um, and I got back here and it was, Immediately when I got to the airport in New Zealand, everything I thought it was going to be started looking real different. And that should have been a clue. 
<laughs> it should have been a whole clue because, you know, I, I was like, I'm, if you're sending me back to the U.S., I'm going in my abundance. I bought my first class ticket. It's the first time, um, it's the first time where I've ever been able to afford that kind of cross-continental first class ticket. Um, they're on sale, be clear. It's, it's COVID. <laughs> People ain't flying to the U.S., so the tickets are cheaper. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I get to go in the lounge, and I'm just going to really give myself the luxury of it. I got to the airport, and it was straight up out of the Hunger Games. There were no lounges open. There were no stores open. They didn't even have chairs for people to sit on. Folks were sitting on the floor like a Greyhound station. And I was like, oh, my champagne wishes and heavy heart dreams <laughs> will not be being played out here. And they were not, it, it was like, you know, my flight was nice, but everything surrounding it was a hot mess. And, you know, I got here and I had this incredibly serendipitous experience where I thought I was going and it was beautiful and I had this big vision. And then, long story short, none of the shit I thought was going to happen happened. <laughs> none of it. <laughs> Other than I got back to America and it was a hot, steaming pile of shitty mess. And that was the only piece that was accurate. Um, and... I went and stayed with a friend and basically was just like, what the fuck is happening to my life? What have I done? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going to live? What, like, how will I be safe? Uh, you know, every question about security and home was activated every question about like did you send me back here to be in the middle of this horrible violence there were gunshots because because cities in america and and so yeah i just cried and cried and cried and was like this is fucking terrifying and here's the deal I don't have any answers. And that is one of the hardest things for me. <laughs> is not to have any answers. To feel uncertain. To feel like, yep, I know a lot of things about a lot of things and I don't know shit about what's next. Other than... I've done a lot of work to not get stuck in the old stories anymore, to not let them take over, to be able to see them, to say, oh, there's that, there's that untruth you made up when you were eight because you didn't understand why your mama wasn't there or whatever. There's that. It's operating right. It's loud. It's not even operating. It's just loud. And you don't have to believe the loud voice, Sonia. You don't have to believe it. You get to believe the other piece that you know to be true, which is that you are divinely cared for. That you have throughout the whole of your entire life somehow still been divinely cared for and so if I'm going to forecast the future that's the one thing I actually consistently have seen to be true is that despite the pain despite the uncertainty despite the traumas at the end of the day I have been divinely cared for and so if I'm gonna hang my hat on something I'm gonna hang it on that and I'm 
two months ago, I sat in a lodge in New Zealand. And I said, wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. And so here I am, uncertain and unsure and afraid and willing to surrender my need to know the future. And to say, I'll go wherever I am told to go. And so today on your journey, wherever it is, if you have made it thus far to be able to listen to this particular what's up y'all, then you too have had some amount of divine care to still be able to be here in this world sharing this journey with me. And so I invite you to go wherever, because wherever it is, you'll get there.